Well, now that Justin and I are finished talking about parenting issues, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this week's episode of Bow Hunter Die. Justin, I got to tell you, watching this, I'm feeling like I suddenly feel depressed, like we can't uh, go. Did you feel that? Just I now? did, you know, a little bit. Like, no part of me at all was missing hunting season. Right. And then I watched these guys go hunting, and I was like, I Can I go this weekend? I kind of wish I could That's go hunting thinking. right now. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, we hope that everybody out there is getting over their deer depression since the season is officially over. But we still have some great hunts for you. So this yeah. week we're going to join Troy Spolum and Clinton Fawcett on two great hunts. So I think we should just stop talking and let these guys go hunt. <laughs> It is uh, noon, just after noon, Saturday, I don't know, what is today, December 20, whatever, I figured it out later, um, let's see, December 28th, and I am loading up the truck right now, literally in the past 15 minutes I decided I'm going to rush out to the property and uh, try and get in the stand in about two and a half hours. I'm packing up my kids too and my wife she's um, being a saint and allowing me to drag everybody out to the hunting property for tonight and come back tomorrow morning just so maybe I can kill a doe wind was bad for the Huntley property I've been really trying to get out I haven't been out for weeks you know, actually since I shot my buck um, but because I want to spend time with family and uh, who's right there I don't know he's, he didn't come outside and now we're scrambling, trying to pack all the kids up, do everything. This is what I do for hunting. This is how tolerant my wife is for what I do with hunting. So we're gonna get packed up, get on the road. Two hour, two hour and 15 minute drive. And I'm gonna, I'm already washed up all my stuff and we're gonna just run right into one of the redneck blinds and I'm gonna hunt with my dad. Should be fun. Here we go, bow hunter die. What's daddy gonna go hunt for? A deer. A deer. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. A cow. A cow. All right. Hopped in the truck. I'm gonna go to the north side of the property and hunt the cemetery. Dad was over there. Where? When? Last two nights. Last two. Last two nights and last night. Last night and night before. Huh. Two nights ago, we saw a lot of deer. Last night, no deer. Just a few. Just a few. Um, looking for does, looking for bucks, looking for anything that'll give us a good shot on it. If there's a trophy doe, might go for it. Father-son duo out uh, doe hunting, buck hunting, turkey hunting, coyote hunting, whatever wants to come out. We're set up over a cut corn field here, and um, Dad's been here like last two nights and two nights ago. Good activity, nothing last night, but you know it's like mid 50s and misty. It's crazy weather for December 28th, but. They still gotta eat after the rut. So I'm hoping they show up here. We only got like, uh, what? We're going out until five. What's that? We have like hour and 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. so That's five, it. Around five o'clock. So I'm gonna hurry and get the lucky face paint on because nothing will come out until I get that. And first big doe that gives us a chance. I might be taking a shot. So.
Spitfire Triple X on them, and uh, that looks to me like a dead doe. That? Yeah, there. Hold on, I can get it. That? Where else do you see it? Yep. Oh, oh yeah, right there. Yeah. Check all this out. Yeah. yeah. She's leading up a storm now. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah. Tons of blood. I mean, she's just. There she is. Jeez. All right, December 28th, and here uh, I got a doe down with my dad. Man, she ran 150 yards. Oh. Gushing. Easy. More, more than that. You think I, so? We got to be 200 yards. 200 yards. And of course, down a hill into the valley. But I mean, the shot is right behind the shoulder. You know, I got to check the footage. Maybe she was slightly quartering too. She was a little bit, but that's there's and, way too much blood. I mean, but anyways, it was Whatever. a lot of blood, yep. which was a great blood trail. So yep. she was just hauling and, uh, well, doe down for the year. Great to just get out here. I'm, you know, through uh through the kids and wife in the car this afternoon thank you to my wife letting me come out here on like a last second whim it wasn't part of the plan and uh was able to get out there with my dad and put a nice doe on the ground so well not a very big doe but uh good meat in the freezer and good experience december 28th and another happy hunter bow hunter die merry christmas everybody and have a safe uh new year this changes everything. The Ultra Compact Vapor RS 470. The AccuSlide Safety Cocking System revolutionizes the crossbow market. Simply backwind the handle, stopping at any point without fear of damage, injury, or losing control. Its reverse draw design generates 470 V per second. Its three and a half pound zero creep trigger delivers same hole accuracy. The all new 
Vapor RS 470 from 10 Point. We are headed into the blind. Uh, I don't know what day it is. It's the day after Frankie killed his big buck last night. So, 18th, Frank says. The 18th. Temperature is drastically dropping very fast. So, we're headed in um, to Bean Pass to get in the wagon blind. So, been several deer back here. We're going to uh, see what we run into. We'll catch up with you. down there get some hot dogs. nice we need some hot dogs we got back up here in case we get cold i got mine rolling here they're messing around the last like, half hour trying to get the blind cleaned up and heaters working and windows moved around the wind's blowing pretty hard probably 20. it's actually laying a little bit probably let's say 15 right now gusting 25 so anyway we're hunting over a bean patch you can see it out there Got a batch of standing beans. Got some good bedding and switchgrass over here. Bedding over there. So there's been uh, several deer coming back here. Um, I haven't checked any cameras here, but I have seen them from the road. So there's one deer back here we've been trying to uh, not shoot, but we'll see what he does when he shows up. I know what Frank's going to say. And Anybody that knows me knows I'm not real well with peer pressure, so. Um, <coughs> there's also a big eight and a big nine point. The nine point's the deer I was really hoping to hunt late season, but he just hasn't materialized at all, so. Frank had a great hunt last night. We had a uh, big rain, snow, ice storm. We had a hell of a time getting the deer out, but it was just an uh, awesome, awesome deer, so. Hoping to uh, back that up with a good hunt tonight. So two nights left tonight and tomorrow night, and we're going to camp out here probably both nights. So anyway, we'll uh, see what happens. Yeah, I know. Back and low. Dude, I was right on him. 
He walked out about another 10 yards, 12 yards. No, I was, I had an edge. I was right on his front shoulder when I squeezed it through. switch grass Frank had a hell of a time getting the camera on him with the angle the blind is but I had him right here 20 yards I was trying to get it figured out and he walked on out there a bit and Frank got the camera back on him good and we got him stopped but he was quartering away and the shot was back it looked like I don't know what happened I was right on him when I squeezed it off I'm shooting off a of bike bot, so I really don't have any reason not to have drilled him. But, um, we'll have to watch the footage back, but it looked to me like it was back. A touch below center of the body and probably the liver and maybe the back of one lung on the other side of the legs. He went in here about, I don't know, 50 yards. I just watched him lay down. So. We're headed back up to look for the deer. Uh, it's been two and a half hours, two hours and 45 minutes. I think the shot was a little better than I initially thought that it was. Um, you can tell when he runs in the woods, his tail's flicking real hard, his mouth's open, the hole comes out right behind the offside shoulder. It's just a couple inches lower than what we would have liked. So anyway, we're headed up now. We're filming the interview in the truck because it is crazy windy and uh, we're not gonna be doing any talking once we get out of here until we find him. So anyway, we're hoping uh, run into a blood to a dead deer at the end of this blood trail we seen him lay down right in there where it was at it was three minutes and 40 seconds on the camera after i shot him until um, he laid down so we're thinking liver one lung maybe both lungs and uh, we're going to slide right there where we last saw him and see what it looks like and hopefully he's laying there dead so here we go okay guys well we got out of the truck slid up here he's uh laying right in there dead about well right where we last saw him he didn't go anywhere it's just hard to tell on those quartering away shots and i you could tell by my interview after i shot him i just it just didn't didn't feel right i knew it was low but that crossbow shoots so fast that it just poof, and it's there and it's just a new experience so anyway a lot of blood a lot of blood right here let's go check him out is better than we thought it was well guys there you go um, I don't even know what to say about this season we've had had a very enjoyable deer season this year um, I guess we used all of it up I, I mean we could have went one more day tomorrow um, but ended it on the day before the last day so anyway just a great year we hunted hard I hunted hard Frank hunted hard we had some great times in the blind we had a lot of fun. Probably my uh, most fun season I've had. We, we hunted together less this year, being so busy with, with football and work and school and everything that everybody's got going on. But when we did get to go, we had a blast. And, and you know, that's the important thing. Last week when we were at the ATA show, I, I got a stepping on a meeting that was uh, ran by the Hunting Public and Nine Finger Chronicles and, and those guys. And was talking about, you know, getting the fun back into hunting and and uh, not taking the fun out always by trying to kill the biggest deer, the score and everything. And that's something I always have a problem with myself. You know, I always want to kill the biggest deer I can find, partially probably because of social, social media and I don't realize it, part, partially because I always want to beat Frank at everything. You know, just something that I let get to me all the time. And, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I was not gonna shoot this deer this year. I, I, I had mixed feelings about it the whole year. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I wanted to try to have a giant deer to hunt next year and tonight, after last week at ATA, I was like, you know what, we get that deer, I'm going to shoot him. We were together tonight, and that's what I was looking for. We've had some great experiences this year, not necessarily just the hunt that we've been on, but the total experience, and it's just been very enjoyable. We haven't rushed it. We haven't just had a bunch of anxiety over it. It's, it's just been great, and a lot of times, especially for me, I know that I can cause myself to have a lot of anxiety and everybody else that's around me. So I just had an absolute great season, Frank and I, had a blast along with Rector and Dustin in the, the last week. I mean, three deer in two nights. Um, it doesn't get much better than that. So we'll end, we'll end it on that note. This is a, a giant deer. 
a great deer that I've had pictures of all summer. He has been all over the farm from one end to the other. I got tons and tons of pictures of him. You heard me talk about him this summer. I built that other food plot. I thought that's where we'd really kill him and he moved up to this end of the farm and uh, we were able to get him shot. So just a, a great year, um, great experiences and great times with family and friends. So until we see in the spring, bow hunter die. Why do you have a mask on? You've already got it. Dude, it's I, not going to help you now. I don't want, to, don't want it to spread to you. I'm just being nice to these guys. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Man. What, you don't ever think about that? You get on the airplane, the guy next to you is wearing the mask. You're sitting there thinking, like, there should be different colored masks. Like, I have something mask, or I'm just protecting myself mask. I'm protecting myself from you, since you have been exposed <sighs> to the coronavirus, apparently. I'm just saying, don't you think my mask Allegedly. is a good idea? Because, I mean, you're sitting next to somebody on the airplane, you're like, dude, like, should I be worried sitting next to you, or are you just trying to be like protecting yourself that's all kind of I think most of the time they're protecting themselves well that's the whole point you don't know I think there's different color masks if someone takes my idea then I'm gonna use this yeah but now if the person's wearing the mask and they're the sick person I right? want to sit by that guy well what's your option what are you gonna do I don't know get a different you airplane. sit by sick people all the time there's just like, what are you gonna well, do then, just I just would, then I guess I would rather not know but when they got the mask on and you don't know you're like oh geez well, it's because they don't want to get sick. Maybe they have like a compromised immune system. I agree, but that's fine. But if that, that, if that mask was yellow, then I'm like, okay, cool, he's got a compromised thing. Then that's you would okay. treat him differently. Just saying. I'm just saying. Nobody wants I to be treated worried. differently. Okay, let's roll. Nobody wants to be treated differently. Well, that's all I'm saying your is that all screwed up too. Troy was successful, shot a doe. Unfortunately, I still am feeling, still? being oh. depressed oh. about oh. not just, I'm dumb. I'm a dumb hunter. I need to shoot more deer. That's what I need to do. Now we that all it's need over. to shoot more deer, Todd. Darn like, it. There's only I one let so many go for everybody sickness. else. And then the sharpshooters get them. I, so I, was I killed more. two does bigger than you this year. You did. You did. You beat me in everything. You beat me in the Lancaster shoot. You shot more does, except for that thing in Wyoming. That one, dude, I smoked you on that one. I'm sorry. You can By show those photos. 10 points. 10 points. 10 inches. No. That's it. That score doesn't matter. We it's all about it. the view and the look. That's all I'm saying. Plus, mine wasn't a one half year old. You get you get more points From when who? I mean, am I who's giving you the points? My year's a whole year older than yours, so maybe two years older. That's worth so much more. Okay, let's stay focused here. Come on. All right. Well, let's let's do this. Let's do we it. Doing I thought we've been doing this. I thought this is live. Live? We're yeah. Live? We're oh. always live. I didn't. I didn't. That's not know. the beauty I of what we're we not. Do. I thought this was not part of the show. This is always a part of the show. That's what makes our show so much fun. Is that what makes our show so yes, much fun? Let us know, real. apparently, if this is the show. <laughs> if you're seeing this, let us know. If you like any of this, this part, good, let us know or below. Or if we should be just talking about hunting. So congratulations, I guess, uh, to, let's start with uh, Troy. We're going to go with Troy first. Congratulations to Troy. I just said congratulations, Troy, at the beginning Well, I this. know, but I wasn't really paying attention because <laughs> I didn't think we were filming. So congratulations to Troy. Made a perfect shot on a doe, had a great blood trail, enjoyed some late season hunting with his dad, hung out with his family. It was all perfect, hunky-dory. And then we go down to Clinton and Frank. So Clinton got to spend time, some time with his hunting wife, Frank. So it was kind of the same thing. <laughs> Should we and get he, them like rings or something? Yeah. <laughs> and he goes out and shoots a buck the night after Frank shot a buck. The last three nights of the season were good. Here in Illinois. I it did not really shoot a buck. Neither shoot did buck. you. You no. saw some. I had a great encounter, but we're going to save that because we agreed that we're just going to put all of our footage up. We're letting Fair it rip. Enough. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot up. more hunts to come. I yeah. still got Todd's late season, a lot of my Iowa adventures from this fall. Those hunts are all coming over the next couple of weeks. But once again, congratulations to Clinton. Um, you know, it turns out that that shot was a lot better than he originally thought because of the angle. He ended up getting liver full right side lung and then clipped the back of the left side lung. He said about an inch in. Um, and it is always amazing to me, like not every double lung shot is created equally, right? If you just get the back of one lung, even though you got both lungs, that deer still, you know, live three, four minutes before they saw him bed down. Whereas with a lot of your just straight on double lung broadside shots, sometimes 30, 45 seconds those deer are down. I got to admit though, Justin, I mean, I think we've been doing this long enough. Anytime you see that tail flicker, for me, that, that's the always, been, the yeah, it's always been a good sign. Yeah. But you know, one thing I think we do, hey Brad, do me a favor, make sure you send uh, Clinton some Kleenex. Cause man, he's getting a little sentimental there at the end. What's going on with Clinton? He's getting soft on us in his old age or what? Maybe, you just never know. Maybe he's just soft. getting in touch with his inner the different side of them. feelings, yeah. Todd. Maybe we all could do that. Good therapy Phoenix. session. 
You need a hug right now? No, this. Yeah, get away I, from no, me. I, You're I, probably I, have coronavirus. I do not. Stay away. Don't touch people. Man. I don't. The ger You're like the biggest germaphobe I know, and you're always hugging everybody. I or at least me. Hug everybody. Just you, Justin. This is you. Just you, buddy. Oh, just you. If we're gonna I die, die, we're going down it. together. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's the end of the hunt and Todd and I talking in this episode. So before we leave, we are going to dive right into trophy photos and take a look at the photos that were sent in for this week's show. Brandon Natkowski. Carson Van de Walker. Chad Story. Jason Ladwig. Nathan Dykes. And Wes Pollock. Well, guys, thanks again for sending in those trophy photos. Keep them rolling in because the season never ends here at Bowhunter Die. Justin, you are the one deeply staring at those photos I did earlier, and I'm going to tell you, that was a tough call, so I'm going to let this one be up oh, to you. Oh, man, this is a this tough This is a one. tough one, guys. Let's go. You got I'm it. going Chad Story. Chad Story, congratulations Boom. on a great buck and a great photo, so make sure you get your information sent to us, and we will get you your Hunter Specialties and Buck Bomb prize pack sent your way. That is all we've got for today's show. Once again, I want to reiterate that I beat Todd at the Lancaster <laughs> Classic since we didn't touch on it's that. It's the Lancaster Classic. Link Gosh, doesn't matter. I won. Right. I can say it however I want. It is I... the Lancaster Classic, and I beat Todd. He did. And Not by much. It doesn't matter, Todd. It only means one arrow. Yeah. That's all it takes, and I beat you by nine, not just one. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time right here. Bow Hunter Die. Carlson Van De Walker. Is that right? Sure. No. Well, how do you say it? <laughs> you said Carlson. <laughs> oh, it's Carson. Carson. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>